Today we're talking trailers. Soft plastic trailers. Great way to beef up your bait. Another great way to add more presentation to your bait. Now, I know it sounds like a no brainer tipping a soft plastic on a bait. Some of you guys have probably done this before, especially if you're hip to fishing bass jigs. Bass jigs are one of those baits that almost look naked if you don't have a trailer on there. So today we're gonna teach you how to pair up the correct trailer with the correct bait, as well as sizing it, but most importantly, when to fish the right kind of trailer in the right scenario so that you guys can get on a better bass bite. So the baits that are most commonly fished with a soft plastic trailer are the baits with a skirt on them. I have a few here in front of me. I have a spinner bait, a swim jig, a bass jig, and a chatter bait. Now these baits are most commonly tipped with a craw or a paddle tail swim bait. So now let's talk about these trailers and which one you should use and when. So let's start off with the paddle tail swim bait. The paddle tail swim bait is a small bait fish imitation. These can be fished as is, but they are a great way to beef up your presentation when it comes to fishing certain baits, as well as give it more action. Anytime that I am fishing one of these skirted baits here in front of me, where I'm going to be swimming it or keying in on bait fish, I'm going to tip it with a paddle tail swim bait. So for example, a swim jig or a spinner bait are two baits that I'm constantly casting and retrieving. We're covering a lot of water and we're fishing in a lot of areas where you're gonna have schools of bait fish. So taking something like a spinner bait and tipping on a pedal tail swim bait is going to beef up that presentation of that spinner bait, but it's also going to add more action and be more intriguing to bass. So as you guys can see there, it really adds to the bait. It adds more action, bigger presentation, and it's just really gonna help in certain scenarios when you guys are fishing. So for example, in the spring and the fall, you get a lot of migrating bait fish. They're moving up towards those creeks, and in the fall, you're gonna have fish with a bigger appetite. So sometimes adding more to your presentation can really trigger a bigger bite. Going back to the swim jig, exact same thing. Paddle tail swim bait on there. This is a bait that I'm constantly throwing in those weeds, casting and retrieving it. So I want something with a paddle tail on there that gives it the swimming action, really key in on those bait fish presentations. These two baits, yes, it could be personal preference. You could maybe throw something like a craw on there, but for the most part, keep it simple, swimming baits, paddle tail swim bait. Swim, swim, bingo, bango. So now let's talk about when you guys should use a craw as your trailer. I like to think of it this way. If you guys have ever seen a crawfish in the wild, maybe you haven't, maybe you have, if you go in like a creek or a river and you lift up a rock, usually a crayfish will either be sitting there or they'll dart out. Now, crayfish move backwards. So what they do is they tend to fly out, go up in the air a little bit in the water and come down and try to just get to the next available piece of structure for them to hide under. So when I am fishing a craw as a trailer, I'm going to think about baits that are gonna have that similar action of going up and fluttering down. So pairing up a craw, that's when I'm going to something like a bass jig. A bass jig is something that you're throwing into cover, you're throwing it in rocks, and you're lifting the tip of your rod up and letting it fall down. So having a crawfish as a trailer really benefits you because that bait is gonna have that exact same action. It's gonna be more natural to those bass and it's gonna trigger a more natural eat. You're gonna get a lot of bites this way. It's a great way to beef up the presentation once again. And yeah, if you guys have never fished a bass jig, out the package, a bass jig tends to look naked without a trailer on there. So more often than not, I am tipping a craw on my bass jigs. So now let's talk about a scenario where you're doing a little bit of both. Now by this, I mean fishing something like a chatterbait. A chatterbait is a lure that you guys can cast and retrieve, fish it by just straight reeling it in, or you can play around with it. You can let it sink down in the water column. You could jig it almost like a bass jig a little bit. You can be erratic. It's got a different type of action that allows you to do a little bit of everything. Fishing a chatterbait comes down to personal preference in which way you like to fish it. Because of this scenario, I want you guys to know that this is one of the exceptions that you can get away with fishing anything you want on one of these chatterbaits. So let's just make it simple, just like I was showing you guys earlier. If you're a guy who really likes to just fish a chatterbait fast, 
you know, you're casting it, reeling it straight in, giving it a few pops here and there. I would recommend going with something like a paddle tail swim bait. I'm fishing fast, I'm covering a lot of water, so I'm going to like the action that I'm going to get out of the tail of that swim bait. Let's say you're fishing a more rocky area where you're letting that chatterbait fall down in those rocks, you're popping it straight up, or it's a murky water lake and you're fishing darker colors, you're getting tighter to cover because those bass are sensing more than they're seeing. That's when I'm gonna take something like a craw and pair it up on my chatterbait. So if you guys haven't picked up on it, I'm really just playing the bait and the trailer that I'm using based on the scenario that I'm fishing. So just try to think it over before you go fishing. I wanted to make this as simple as possible to point you guys in the right direction. Now, now that you know where you're gonna fish it and when you're gonna fish it, let's talk about how you size up the trailer correctly to your bait. When it comes to sizing up your trailer to your bait, it's gonna come down to a little bit of personal preference and what trailer you are throwing. So soft plastics come in all different shapes and sizes. Some companies specifically make little versions of craws to be fished as a trailer, but some companies just make a craw that you can fish regularly that can just be used as a trailer. So when it comes to buying one, you might be good to go right out of the package. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that down. So when it comes to using a full size plastic, sometimes you guys have to modify it so that it can be used correctly or that it will function correctly with the bait that you're throwing. So I have this chatter bait right here and I wanna size it up with this craw. So if you guys can see right here, this craw is almost as big as this chatter bait. So if I take this bait, throw it right on as is without making any modifications to it, you know, it, it won't look terrible. It'll look a little bit longer and honestly, to some of you, you might love the way that this guy looks right here. Although this might look great and it doesn't look terrible, there actually are some disadvantages that you guys can run into. So in some scenarios, when you're fishing a bait like this, you know, you're swimming through the water and the fish are attacking it from this direction, right? So oftentimes what may happen is you have so much leftover soft plastic here that that fish is going to short strike and they're gonna bite onto that soft plastic and not necessarily get that hook. And if those fish don't get that hook, well, we obviously know that fish ain't gonna make it in the boat. So one thing I wanna point out for you guys here is when you're using a soft plastic like a craw, try to use one without appendages on the side. So as you guys can see right here, this soft plastic doesn't have appendages on the side, only at the bottom. Now what's good about this is we can trim up our bait as much as possible until we get up to these claws. The reason being is your action is coming out of those appendages. You're not relying on the body of this bait for its action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip off, you know, probably close to an inch of this bait because what we're trying to do here is we're going to get as much of the body gone as we can, but just enough to where that hook is coming out right before those appendages. So as you guys could see, I ripped the bait off. I'm gonna go ahead, stick this hook through and boom. Now I have a hook coming right where the action is, right where that fish is gonna make that strike. And although it's a little bit shorter, it's a little more tight knit, I promise you guys, you're gonna hook up with a lot more fish by shortening that trailer. Now, if the soft plastic is bigger or smaller than the one I just used, you guys can just put it up right next to the hook like so. You can just put it up next to it like this, take your plastic, put it up to where that hook meets and just, just pair it up and you measure it out. Just make sure you guys can get as close as you can to those appendages without actually affecting the action of the appendage and you should be good to go. So there you guys have it. There's some simple ways that you can look at fishing trailers in the right scenario with the right bait. It's not too crazy. I used a craw and a paddle tail swim bait today because if you are newer to bass fishing, this is gonna be the easiest way for you to get on a good bite and learn how to get better at fishing. Now, there are plenty of other options out there for trailers. It comes down to personal preference, but to point you in the right direction, just think about it the way that I told you today, as well as try and color match it. Um, I didn't really put this on the surface here today because use what you got, but if you're in the position where you can match up the color, so for example, this one's black and blue flake with black and blue flake, 
it's gonna be more enticing to that fish. It's gonna look more natural. So try to match up your color. Try to use the right trailer in the right scenario. You guys will be catching more fish. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Tight Lines. If you guys are new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you guys wanna learn more about bass fishing, just pay attention to the videos posted on this channel. My name's Jordan, I'll see you guys later.